Thank you, thank you. The, the point I'd, make to like, the, I'd like to make this evening, greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. And greed in all of its forms, greed for life, greed for love, greed for knowledge, for wealth. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, in today's time with the housing market, with $13, $13 trillion in debt, $800 billion in bailouts, billion dollar Ponzi schemes, why would I be talking about this? But it needs defending. Now greed, the definition, let's start with that. Greed is an excessive desire to possess wealth or goods. And the word excessive is exceeding the normal or permitted limits. Now that's important, I'm gonna refer back to that because it's a subjective meaning and what we do about it is important. Now above, this is the history, or this is a depiction, I should say, of the god Mammon who is a god of wealth and man who is worshiping him. And to worship him or to worship wealth is inherently evil. So why am I here talking to you tonight about something evil? And I say it's because it's something we're afraid of, something we don't like to talk about or think that it's in any way part of us. It's always the next person who's greedy or is thinking of them, their own interests. So, uh, so that, that's the reason why I'm talking to, to you tonight about this issue. Uh, first, I'd also like to say that uh, uh, there are two types of greed. Of course, there's the bad and good. And the bad is the one that first comes into all of our minds, I'm, I'm sure. And these are faces that we're very familiar with, unfortunately. This is Kenneth Lay and Bernie Madoff. Uh, uh, two awful characters in history that uh, they are going to go down in history. Uh, these are people who uh, take and don't, uh, don't contribute at all. Um, they, they destroy wealth. They don't create wealth. And, uh, and that's just a destructive force, and that's obviously not what I'm here talking to you tonight. Uh, another poor uh, uh, side, uh, side effect of greed is uh, those who impose their will on us, impose uh, uh, their own selfish in interests so we are not able to pursue our own. Uh, by use of force, coercion, or deception, and that's also not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to what I consider good greed, and one of the philosophers that, that talks about good greed or rational self-interest is Ayn Rand. She says that man is a heroic being, that his productivity is his one purpose in life, and reason is his only absolute. Thomas Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence said, among all of our rights, we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the pursuit of happiness is very interesting, and the way we go about allowing people to truly pursue their happiness. So philosophers like Ayn Rand, founding father Thomas Jefferson, and uh, my fam favorite economist Milton Friedman are all people who have written extensively on the, the benefit that all comes to us as we pursue our own self-interest. So these six people above us here are, are some people that are, are practitioners of, of this uh, moral good or moral virtue. Um, these people alone hire hundreds of thousands of people, provide a standard of living uh, that would have never otherwise been realized. Now, I've, I'm of course in no way speaking that, that charity has no place in, in this self-interested world that I'm proposing. It absolutely does. I feel it's inherently interested for all of us to, to give to those that are less fortunate or unable to produce as some of us are. The only thing I would say is, just back to that meaning again of excess, who is allowed to determine our excess in life and by what standard? And if we're able to answer that question, for what purpose? And, and decided by whom? And do we make these decisions based on the idea that there's scarcity in wealth? That, that wealth itself is, is derived because someone able to earn something then has taken away my ability to earn? And is that the reason why we, we feel sometimes the way we do about this? Now I know this is kind of a scary concept because allowing everyone to pursue their own interests of course is gonna cause some pretty wild fluctuations in the market. We've already seen this for, for varying degrees I should say. And, and that's going to be natural. Loss, fear of loss is just as natural as, as the, the drive for gain. And I say when everyone is looking out for their best interests, oftentimes the group in large is being benefited from that purpose. It drives competition, it drives efficiency, it drives affordability. Um, these are all good values. Of course, it's some of the reasons why many of us are, you know, waking up early, going to work uh, before anybody else, going to sleep you know, late in the night and, and just working our butts off, trying to get something done, trying to produce, and it's a, a, a virtue that I, that I think is, is uh, that's near and dear to me. Uh, is there any reason then that our country is the envy of the world or has been, at least in terms of an economic engine, a creative engine, and part of which I believe is because we've been allowed to pursue our own self-interest, and it doesn't need to be the dirty word that it is. Uh, Wall Street 2 just recently came out, of course, the title of my speech uh, came to me uh, after the movie's release and Gordon Gecko, the character. If you haven't seen it, go out and see it. It's interesting. It really shows you the ugly side of materialism and, and the shallowness of greed. But uh, thank you very much for your time.